In the previous lecture, we have studied about process creation, which was an operation on processes. And in this lecture, we'll be studying about process termination, which is also an operation on processes. So from the name itself, you can understand that process termination means when a process comes to an end and we are terminating it. So a process terminates when it finishes executing its final statement and ask the operating system to delete it by using the exit system call. So a process is said to have terminated when it finishes executing its final statement. So we know that in processes there are lines of code or lines of statements that are being executed. So when it reaches its final statement and when the final statement finishes its execution at that time the process asks the operating system to delete it by using the exit system call. So using the exit system call, the process asks the operating system to delete it because it has finished its execution. So at that moment, the process terminates. So at that point, the process may return a status value, which will typically be an integer to its parent process via the wait system call. So we have seen about the process tree where we have the parent process and the children of a particular process. There can be many children of a single process. So the children process, they belong to a parent process. So when a child process or when some children process has completed its execution and when it is going to terminate, it will return a status value to its parent. And why will it do so? so that the parent will know that the child process has completed its execution and it is terminating and it will do so using the wait system call all the resources of the process including physical and virtual memory open files and input output buffers are deallocated by the operating system so when a process is executing we know that it is assigned certain resources we have already studied about this so when a process completes its execution, all the resources that are allocated to that particular process. So resources may be memory, which may be physical or virtual, and it may have files and it may have input output buffers. All these kind of resources may be allocated to a particular process while it is executing. And when the process finishes its execution and when it is going to terminate, all these resources that was being held by that particular process are deallocated by the operating system. That means it is freed from that process so that it can be used by another process. Now, terminations can occur in other circumstances as well. So, when we just studied about termination now, we saw that a termination of a process occurs when the final statement of the process has been executed and when the process finishes and at that time, the termination of a process occurs. So, that's what we just saw but termination can also occur in other circumstances as well and let's see what they are a process can cause the termination of another process via an appropriate system call so one process can cause the termination of another process via an appropriate system call all right so not only when a process finishes its execution but also when a process may still be executing at that moment also another process can cause the termination of that process via an appropriate system call. Now you may be thinking if this is possible then every process may be able to kill or terminate every other processes. So that is not the case. Usually such a system call can be invoked only by the parent of the process that is to be terminated. So the killing of one process by another process only occurs when the process that is killing the process is its parent process. So we said that a process can cause termination of another process via an appropriate system call. But such a system call can be invoked only by the parent of the process that is to be terminated. That means only the parent can kill its own children. All right. Only the parent process can kill the child or children of that process. Otherwise, users could arbitrarily kill each other's jobs. So if that was not the case, then every process will be able to kill each other and that will cause a great problem. So when one process kills another process, remember that it is the parent that is killing the child or the 
children of that particular process. Now, a parent may terminate the execution of one of its children for a variety of reasons such as this. Now, we may be thinking, why would a parent process kill its child or children processes? There may be a variety of reasons for that to happen. So, let's see what are those reasons. The first reason is, the child has exceeded its usage of some of the resources that it has been allocated. To determine whether this has occurred, the parent must have a mechanism to inspect the state of its children. So, the first reason why a parent might kill its child in terms of process is when the child has exceeded its usage of some of the resources that it has been allocated. So, we know that there are certain resources allocated to each of the processes. So, even the children are also having some of the resources. Now, if a child or if the children has exceeded its usage of the resources that it has been allocated, at that time, the parent might want to kill that child so that it can get back its resources and that resources may be allocated to some other processes or the parent itself may want to use some of those resources. Now, to determine whether this has occurred, the parent must have a mechanism to inspect the state of its children. Now, how does a parent know whether the child has exceeded the usage of the resources that it has been allocated? So, in order to know that, the parent must have some kind of mechanism by which it will know the state of its children. It will know how much resources the children is using and what is the state of the children. So, using some kind of mechanism, the parent will find that out and if it finds that the children is exceeding the use of the resources, then it can terminate that child process. So, that was one reason and the second reason is the task assigned to the child is no longer required. Now, we know why a parent creates children. A parent creates a children or a child process in order to perform a particular task. Now, if the task assigned to that child is no longer required by the parent or no longer required by the entire process tree itself, then that child can be terminated. We don't need that child because the task assigned to that child is no longer required. So, this is another reason because of which a parent may terminate the children or the child. And the third reason is, the parent is exiting and the operating system does not allow a child to continue if its parent terminates. Now, this is the third reason. The third reason says that the parent is exiting. That means the parent itself is terminating and then that operating system does not allow the child to continue if the parent terminates. So, when the parent terminates, some operating systems does not allow the processes which are created as the children of that parent to continue if the parent terminates. So, if that kind of a case occurs, when the parent is terminating, all the children processes associated to that parent should also be terminated. So, this is in the case of some of the operating systems. So, if the parent terminates, all the children of that parent also must terminate. So, all the children of that process will also terminate when the parent is terminating. So, we have seen what are the reasons due to which a parent may terminate his children and we saw when does a termination of a process occurs. It either occurs when the process has finished its execution or the parent process may kill or terminate its children process due to one of these reasons mentioned here. So, that was about process termination which is also an operation on the processes. So, I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.